Hey guys, thanks for joining us to learn to play games. My name is Lance, and today we're going to take a look at a brand new game called Towers of Arkanos. This is a new game by Creative Game Studio. It is a two to four player game that takes roughly half an hour to an hour to play, and it is a competitive game, so each player is going to be working against the other players to be the overall winner at the end of the game. So in the game itself, each player is going to be playing a school of magic, and they are going to have their apprentices and master trying to construct a tower to siphon off the magic from this area, and the player that is able to do this the most effectively will be the overall winner at the end of the game. So my opinions on this one, I would definitely recommend this one to both families and light to medium gaming groups. The rules to this one are very easy, and there's not a lot of complication to them, and they do an excellent job of, of outlining all the different examples in the rule book of the different ways to score and whatnot, so I found that really helpful. And I think that'll be great for reference as players get into this and familiarize themselves with this. And as you guys are going to see in the video, like I said, the rules are very easy with this one. It's easy to teach and get players involved with it. And it doesn't take a long time to play. There's a lot of replayability and player turns move pretty quickly as each player is only doing one, a couple of things during their turn and then it's moving on to the next player. So rounds are going to move pretty quickly within this as well. So of course, these are just my opinions. I'd love to hear you guys in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think. If you like this game, if you back this game as a Kickstarter, let me know in those comments below. And also, if you enjoy these videos, if you like what I do, please consider hitting that like button, subscribing to my channels. It really does help me to continue to grow and be able to bring these games to you guys. If you want to stay up to date on all my stuff, also consider hitting that notification bell so you get notifications anytime I release new content. So let's head to the table, and I'll teach you guys how to play. Arcanos will come with 40 standard six-sided dice, and they're going to be broken down into the four different colors, which is blue, purple, red, and yellow. Throughout the game, the players are going to be building towers with the tower tiles, and each one of these tiles is going to be double-sided, with one side having three different icons on it, which all of the, the different tiles are going to have the three same icons on them, which the top one it will get you two prestige points. This one will allow you to place another meeple on another tower or into your spellbook. And then this one will give you a number of prestige points based on the level of that tower. And I'm going to go into more detail about that later. And then each one of these is also going to have a spot for a meeple to go. And we'll have the different requirements for the color and number of dice that can be placed in here. So for example, with this tower, you can only place yellow dice of 1, 3, and 5 values. With this tower here, you can use 5 and 6s from yellow or red dice. And this one can have any blue dice number as long as it's not the same number that has already been used within the tower. On the back side of all the towers are going to be the ceiling tiles, and each one of these is just going to have meeple locations and the dice locations without any special bonuses like the other side does. And the central side lists that you can use any color die in these locations, and I'll cover this more a little bit later. Finally, we're going to have the starting tiles, and I'll show you how to set these up, and they work pretty much the same way as these as well. So you'll have the central location that any color can be placed in, and then locations for the dice and the meeples that'll go in them. For player setup, each player is going to choose a color that they'd like to play as, and then they'll receive the seven apprentice meeples and the one master meeple of that color, and the spell book of that color as well. And each spell book is going to break down the six different spells that you'll have, and all players are gonna have the same spells, available to them throughout the game, and I'm going to show you how this is going to work later. On the back side of this card is the same thing, but just with the icons instead. So if you prefer to have just the icons versus having the words, you can use whichever side you like. And the last thing we need to cover is the round tracker itself. So depending upon the number of players you're playing, if you're playing a two or four player game, you're going to go eight rounds, and if you're playing a three player game, then you'll go nine rounds. And each, at the end of each round, you're going to place the remaining die in that location to mark the round as well. And I'll show you this in a minute. And then at the bottom of the card is a quick reference guide for the scoring step each time a tower is scored. And I'll show you this as well. For board setup, the first thing you're going to do is grab the tower tiles and separate the starting tiles, which again are going to be the ones with the purple die symbols and the stars on them. So there should be four of those that you'll go ahead and grab. With those, you're going to go ahead and mix those up and you'll place one out in the central location, and then the other three you're going to turn over and make a triangle out of. From there, then go ahead and grab the rest of the tower tiles and shuffle them up. And you can just place them out in a stack face up to one side. Go ahead and grab the dice bag and place all of the 40 different dice in there as well. And you can go ahead and mix those up and then place those off to the side. 
Go ahead and place out all of the prestige tokens as well. And for this video, I'm going to be using the Crystal Fortress pods. You'll be able to find a link to their website in the description below as well. I definitely recommend them. I really enjoy using these for all my games. So I would definitely take a look at them if you get a chance. From here, each player is going to select their color. And so I'm going to set up for a three player game. The last thing we need to do before moving into the game is to choose a starting player. And you can do this in any manner you want. You can have the players roll the dice and the player that has the highest will go, or you can simply choose one. So I'm going to go ahead and have the yellow player start. And so that player is going to go ahead and randomly take a number of dice out of the bag based on the number of players. So with us playing a three player game, we'll go ahead and pull four dice out of the bag and then he's going to go ahead and give them a roll. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll go ahead and start off with him drawing those dice. There's three and four. Then he can set the bag off to the side and then go ahead and give these a roll. All right, and then we're ready to move into the player turns. At the beginning of each player's turn, they're going to select one of the die from the pool and bring it to their area. And this selection is going to be based on where they can place it within the towers and which spots are available. As the numbers on the die and the color of the die are important based on the towers we've selected as we've already gone into detail on. So for example, with our top tower here, we have to use a yellow die and it has to be a two, four, or six. Down here, it has to be purple, one, three, or five, and blue for one or two. The central tower can have any color and any number in it. So currently, all of our dice are basically gonna to have to be played in the central tower as none of them are gonna meet the requirements of any of the outer towers. So our yellow player is going to go ahead and select one. So he's going to take this yellow one. And then from there, he's going to choose a tower again to play it in as long as he can meet the requirements of that tower. And so all we can do is play it in a central tower. And then anytime you play a die, you must play a meeple along with it. And you have a choice. You can either play a apprentice meeple or your master meeple. And this is going to add points to that tower when it's scored. Apprentice meeples are only worth one, and a master meeple is worth two to determine who has the majority in that tower. And I'll cover this more later. So our yellow player is simply just going to place an apprentice in there for now. So from there, then, we're going to resolve the effects of the die based on the tower that we've placed it in. With the outer towers, each one of the locations is going to have an ability that will be triggered once the die is placed. With the central tower, when you place a die in there, then you're going to gain a spell of that number as well. So with us playing the number one die, we would gain the number one spell, so we would take another one of our apprentice meeples and place it on the number one slot. And if we do not have any meeples left, then we cannot choose to do that. Now, if we have any meeples in our spell, book, we can choose to remove one of those and add it back to our stack instead of triggering that ability. Now, one other thing with these spell books is that you can use any of the spells you have access to that have a meeple on them. And then once you use it, you're going to remove that meeple and return it back to your supply. Once our yellow player has completed their turn, then we'll move on to the next player in clockwise order. So our blue player will be the next one to go. And again, our blue player is going to select one of the die that he would like to take. So he's going to go ahead and take number six. And again, he's going to place it in the central tower along with one of his apprentice meeples. And then he's also going to gain the level or the number six spell. From there, then his turn is done as well. So we'll move over to our red player who is going to select one of those remaining die. So he'll take the five and place it there as well. Now, as soon as he places it, he's also going to place his master meeple in there. Now, as soon as he places the meeple, we're going to move into a scoring step since the tower is full. And there's a quick reference guide on the Magic Council board as well. So with this being the central tower, the first player is going to receive three points, the second player is going to receive two, and any tiles will receive one. So our red player has the master in there. He counts as two, and the apprentices count as one. So he has two points, so he has the most, so he's going to receive three. And then our other two players are tied, so each one of them is going to receive one point. Once we're done with that, then each player is going to receive their meeple back, unless it is taking the place of a die, and I'll show you that in a second. Then you're going to take the next disc from the top of the tower stack and with it being the central tower you'll flip it over and place it on top of those die. From there then if the if the player had any other things that he needed to do during his turn he would go ahead and resolve that step and with the red player being the last player to go then the last die will go into the track on the thing to, to track the number of turns as well. 
From there, then the first player die bag will be passed to the next player in clockwise order, so our blue player will be the next one to start the round. So let me take you through another round now. So our blue player will be the one to go this turn for the first player, so he's going to draw four dice out of the bag. And go ahead and give them a roll. From there, then he's going to choose one of those again. So he's going to take this yellow six, and he's going to place it in that tower, and he's going to go over here to get two points. So again, we'll place a meeple over there, and he'll gain two prestige points for place it in that spot. And then we'll move over to our next player. So our red player will be the one to go next. And so he's going to take the blue two, and he'll place it over here. Now with this one, you have a choice. With the one that gives you an additional meeple, you can either place that in your spell book and gain that number as well, or you can place it in another tower and it must be a different tower to take the place of the die. So for example, with uh, let's go ahead and place it up here and we'll take this location here. So now no player can play a die in there. And then when the tower is scored, this meeple will stay in that location, but he's also going to count for points in that tower to determine who has the majority of the influence in that tower. So now that his turn is done, we're ready to move on to the yellow player to go. And so yellow is going to go ahead and play the number one in, well, let's go to number six here. And then he'll again gain the number six spell. This last dice will be placed in there and that will end the turn and then we'll move over to our next player. Now I'd like to go into a little bit more detail about the scoring. So you guys already saw how we score the middle tower, but let's go ahead and take a look at another example of an outer tower. So let's go ahead and say that our red player, it is going to be his turn to play. He's chosen the dice and go ahead and, and roll them. So we have a yellow four there, which will match our spot up there. So he's going to go ahead and do that. So he's going to place that there along with the meeple. And then that location is going to let him play another meeple as well. Or again, he can gain that spell. So this time he's just going to gain that spell. And then we would also score that tower. So at this point, red has two points in there where blue only has the one apprentice, which is only going to count as one point. So again, referencing this, the first player is going to receive six points, which red is going to be our first or highest player. And then the second player is going to receive four. So our blue player would receive four points there. Then our players would receive their meeples back, except for any meeple that is taking the place of a die. So this red meeple will stay there and become part of that foundation of that tower. Then we place the next one on top. And then we continue on with the turn. There's a couple of important rules I want to cover real quick. So the first is running out of meeples. So let's go ahead and say, for example, that the blue player had a couple of meeples in his spell book, and he only had one remaining, and there was, it was his turn to choose a die, so he chooses the purple one to place in the central tower. Now that would let him place a meeple in his spell book. At this point, he could choose to take one of his meeples in his, in his spell book and move it to that new number of the tower that he, or the number of the die that he placed in the tower, or he can choose to forego that and also take one of the meeples out of his spell book if he wants to and add it back to his reserve so he can use it in a later turn. The other thing I want to cover is the spell book itself. So again, like I said, a player can choose to use any number of spells that they have during their turn. And for each spell that they choose to use, they're going to remove the meeple of that spell and add it back to their reserve. So let's look at an example of this. We'll go ahead and say that the blue player has not selected a spell yet or a die yet to use. And so they have this purple six here that they want to use, but they can't, they can't use it in anything except for that central tower. But he does have a meeple in the lesson one, which is manipulation, and I can choose any other lesson from this spell book. So I could choose any one of the five spells to use. So we're going to go ahead and discard this meeple to use it, and we're going to go ahead and choose lesson three, which lets us rotate a die to the other side so that now it becomes a one. And so now our blue player can add that down here if he wanted to, or he could go back to the central tower with it if he wanted to. And that let him place another meeple. And again, he can choose to again gain that lesson or place another one in another tower. Once the players have completed all their rounds, again, based on the number of players, with a two or four player game, you'll go eight rounds. And with a three player game, you'll go nine rounds. We're ready to move into the final scoring step. So before moving into that, the last thing we need to do is receive prestige points for incomplete towers. So again, we'll move into the scoring step for that. 
and each tower will be you'll look at the number of players and the points that they have in there and then based on that there'll be a final scoring with first place receiving three points second place receiving two and one and any ties receive one point apiece so with our tower here both blue and red are tied so each of them is going to receive one prestige point and this for this scoring step it doesn't matter for central tower or the side towers the red player over here has the most points so he'll receive three points and he's the only one over there and then over here the yellow player is the only one so he will receive three points for that and three points for the central tower from there then any player that has any meeples in their spell books will receive one point for each meeple that is in there so blue gets one Red will get three for that, and then yellow will have two points. From there, then each player is going to total up all of their prestige points that they have, and the player that has the most will be the overall winner. If any players have tied, then the player that has the most meeples in their spellbook will be the winner in that situation. Well, I hope you guys found this video helpful. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comment section below, and I'll do my best to answer them. Or swing by my Facebook or Twitter accounts. Let me know what you guys are doing or playing there. Or uh, if there's any videos you'd like me to cover, I would love to hear from you guys and love to start a conversation. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch my videos and leave me feedback on them. I do really appreciate it, and I try to take into account everything you guys say to make the best possible videos. If you enjoy these videos, if you like what I do, please consider that like button and subscribing to my channel as it really does make a big difference and helps me to continue to grow and be able to bring these games to you guys. Till next time, I'll see you guys later.